we would be holding hands and we would just know there's certain places where you don't do that. Yeah, it's more open. The other are more crampy and more like... Mm. We had an issue with 377A that criminalized gay sex and last year it was repealed. They might have a relationship with their own family, but to a stranger it's like not my business. My name is Cal Marcus. I've been in Taiwan for 10 years. I'm from the States. Hi, my name is Felicia Conditioner. I'm from Vienna, Austria. I am Casper from Hong Kong. I'm Jack. I'm a bondage uh, top and stuff. I'm Alfred. I'm Edric. My name is Rufus. I'm from the UK. Been in Taiwan about two years. My name is Volta. Been living in Taiwan for a almost six years now. I'm from Paraguay. My name is Dumi Shabalala from South Africa. I've been here in Taiwan for 10 weeks in Yunlin County. But what brought you out of Taiwan to begin with? At the moment I work and I study. I think the life here is easy to adjust. I'm here with China Airlines and we want to bring more European guys here. Why does China Airlines want to bring more men to Taiwan? Normally the people say, okay, Taiwan, China, it's a little bit Confusing for everybody. Taiwan is a really liberal country. This is important to say this. I arrived in Taiwan teaching and then I opened an education strategies company. I was supposed to stay one year and then it turned into two and then three and now it's been ten. Originally I got a scholarship to study in my college here. Now I'm working as a model and actor and doing TV shows and stuff like that. I'm an English teacher in one of the prestigious schools in Yunlin County. I came to Pride for a holiday. We come to Taiwan often, it's four hours away. What kind of attracts you guys into bonding? and doing like the rope work. I think it looks good on me and exposed more. Uh, being tied up and like submitting to whoever you trust, uh, your dorm. The power exchange in itself is really interesting. Are people kind of like open towards different lifestyles here and different sexuality? I've had people approach me and my guy friend on the street and they're like, Oh, so you guys are a couple. And we're like, oh no, we're just friends. They're like, oh, but you guys are like holding hands and you're both guys. We're like, yeah, but we're just friends. And that was a moment that made me really realize like how free it is and how comfortable I am. Because even dating somebody in the States of the same sex, it's like, we would be holding hands and we would just know there's certain places where you don't do that. Mm -hmm. And I never have that experience in Taiwan. I never feel like, oh, maybe I should tone down my gayness for this situation. Besides being queer, yeah. When you're a human being here in Taiwan, they're so welcoming and they're very helpful. And what I like the most is that I can take videos, I can hold my phone like this without anyone having to look who's with my phone. Yeah, it's more open. In the end, they are more grumpy and more like me. And here the guys are doing pictures and doing thumbs up. That's really good to see. I think so, yeah. If you go to Shiman, you see a lot of same-sex looking couples holding hands, very accepting and open. It feels safer than being back home in the UK. I have never felt so comfortable just being myself than I have been in Taiwan. It literally feels like a warm hug every time. Yeah, it's more open. We, we hold hands everywhere. We had an issue with 377A that criminalized gay sex, and last year it was repealed. In Hong Kong, we didn't even have anti-discrimination law. In terms of freedom for gay rights, it's far, far better over here. So do you think that that would actually be an influence in actually moving here? Definitely, yes. It's a beacon of LGBT rights for all over the Asia. I think Taiwan is already quite advanced, but because our education is more traditional, 感觉大家都还是比较地下化在做任何的事情。我觉得文化上是还有很多空间可以继续加强。What's the kind of the vibe in Yunlin County in terms of like people of different sexual identities? They don't judge, however they are very curious. What are some of the questions that people in Yunlin ask you when they see you? Basically they don't ask questions, they just stare you. If you are that colorful, they will just look at you. Oh. If you are that feminine, uh, they will look at you. I'm from Africa, so when I get someone looking at me, it's like, oh okay, maybe it's about sexuality or color, so that's that. Even like in the countryside, around my Aboriginal friends, and with their family, they're like, okay, maybe tone it down a little bit for like my grandpa or my dad. Even if you are very obviously gay or being a bit sissy, they don't really mind. It's more like they might have a relationship with their own family, but to a stranger, it's like not my business. You're just a person that I know and I always feel very comfortable. Are there certain issues that your Taiwanese gay friends are facing in terms of gay rights? My friends are okay in themselves and their own lives, but they might not be as clear with their families as they could be. 
他是不是有在他的家庭上出柜，你就知道他到底是面对进步的环境还是保守的环境。你可以顺利的出柜吗？一半顺利，一半挣扎出柜的。Since you've been here, you've probably been in some longer-term relationships. Have you ever met parents before? Meeting parents is bizarre because they introduce you as your friend, and I feel like sometimes parents will know, but they don't necessarily ever acknowledge that you're a couple. And is that kind of like disappointing? No, because I understand that like it's a generational thing, and the best way to educate people is just by living your life and having genuine interactions. Just treat people with kindness and humanity. A lot of times they treat you also with kindness and humanity. Have you run into that problem yourself? Yeah, I've been called friend. After four or five months, I was shown to the family as. This is my friend for five seconds. This is a friend. Goodbye. Sometimes they'd rather it's easier to not not explain. Unless you guys are like getting married or something. That would be another level, yeah. Yeah, all the prenup, all the yeah, all the add you to the family group chat. You get all the Zhang Bei tour. My ex ex partner. I took him back to the UK、uh, to meet my family, and they were very like welcoming to him. Feel very lucky. Living in Yunnan, I don't have friends, and I don't have people that are outside of the closet. Most cases, I have a grinder app trying to make friends, but it's hard because again. I'm from another different country. I've got a different color, so it's not easy as yeah. Hopefully today I will kiss someone. You're single today. Yeah, I'm single. That's why I'm wearing this. Exactly. <laughs> I've been in four relationships, very short-lived. I blame them. <laughs> it's all their fault. Being in relationships has been harder for me because of the cultural differences. Taiwanese people avoid conflicts. Me being autistic, not reading emotions. I have no idea you. Problem. I myself, in the group, the persona of a foreigner I like to be more than I am. I'm very honest. Do you feel like there's certain issues that the gay community is still facing in Taiwan in particular? The gay community is a very much a microcosm of what's happening in the larger society. Taiwanese people are so friendly, so welcoming, so nice to people that are visiting. But then once you're here, there's always a very clear line that it's like, oh, but this is Taiwanese and you're a foreigner. You speak Chinese? I do. I don't speak Chinese. I have a lot of foreign friends. Sometimes I'm dialing. I'm listening to my friends. They're speaking English. Then I say, oh. 如果我到了，你不用换英文，你可以说中文，然后我可以听到。No matter how good my Chinese is, no matter how no, much I know about the history of Taiwan and the culture, no matter how many Aboriginal or Chinese friends I have, I will always be a foreigner, and I will never fit in. And that's freeing in that if I have a ton of earrings and I have makeup on and I'm wearing something like this, I'm no more weird than if I'm just trying to live and integrate normally because I'm already weird. And the gay community is kind of like that too. They're very friendly and very welcoming. You show up and every Everybody's like, this is the place to be if you're gay. This is great. But then once you live here, I know a lot of queer people that have a hard time finding a group that they feel really welcome in because it can be very clicky. Are those lines based on like kink and sexual preference? In the states, I was bisexual. I would break up with a guy and then I'd be dating a girl. And moving to Taiwan, I'm almost exclusively gay because Taiwanese girls are very much like, but what does it mean that you're gay? You were you were dating a guy before, and I have to play 20 questions every single thing that comes up, and it feels very bizarre. Like we're hanging out. And we enjoy each other's company. Why do I have to prove to you that I'm not dating you for some ulterior motive, and I'm secretly going to be fucking guys on the side? There's a lot of segregation. Me as a non-binary person, if I go to a gay party, I I still feel safe. I don't feel like it's my place. It's for cis gay men. And do you feel like comfortable walking around in your bondage in Taipei? I feel free to walk like this in the parade. That definitely not on the street in the normal days. Yeah. Like this kind of free speech activist, just go and follow him. Have you found any other free speech activist or free speech activist? Please share the video. Click the link in the description box. Click the link in the description box. Click the link in the description box.